So um, today we continue to study about the life of Buddha. So last time we learned that um, the Buddha went to Samadhi in the capital of Kosala uh, Kingdom to display his um, super natural power that the uh, no Buddhist religious uh, leaders uh, could not challenge him. And after that, the uh, Buddha went to the heaven of Purdue uh, to teach his mothers, uh, Queen Maya, the one who passed away seven days after she gave birth to him. And, uh, he was born in that Kushida uh, heaven as the way to the title of Kailas. He did work to him. And from there, he pushed uh, Abhidhamma, that is uh, the collection of um, the commentaries, uh, analysis uh, of. Uh, in the scriptures, and after that, he went down together with um, the uh, second kind of plots and the Indra, the so forth. And from that time on, uh, people uh, when to see him and sick for the teaching, and uh, that's why uh, the Buddha and his uh, religious disciple received a tremendous abundant uh, uh, offers uh, from the lay people, as well as uh, the royal families um, in that era and the surrounding. Um, so that is the reason why um, many uh, non Buddhist religious leaders became careless uh, because um, why people went to see the Buddha and uh, the place for his teachings, uh, they left uh, those um, non Buddhist religious teacher, and as a result, um, those uh, non Buddhist religious teacher uh, could not uh, get any financial uh, uh, support from the lay people um, because eventually many of them converted to Buddhism. And let their formal non Buddhist illusions. So that's why uh, some of them became jealous and they could not um, find any way uh, to stop that. So it's happened that um, there was one uh, lady, her name is uh, Sinja Manavita. Uh, she followed one of the uh, now Buddhist and uh, religious uh, uh, groups. And when uh, she went to see their teachers, uh, she heard that um, they talk about how they lost their um, followers because of the Buddha. They lost the financial support uh, from uh, the people who have supported them before, but now uh, they all went to um, seek the good officials as well as supporting the good as this uh, close disciple. So, um, after 
theory uh, goes to the mid-basin. Um, uh, the uh, frustrations uh, on uh, her pictures. So um, this lady uh, told her teachers that uh, don't worry, I do a great scan uh, to destroy Gautama uh, 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 by using my beauty and uh, according to the legend, they say that uh, she was so beautiful uh, as a celestial uh, female. So at that time, those uh, young Buddhists, uh, the racist uh, leader, was so delightful to hear that at least uh, they have uh, um, found uh, one a student that uh, can uh, help them to regret uh, their friends and benefit from following uh, uh, um, uh, to desire this camp uh, to put down uh, the good friends. So open praise for her. And uh, so the lesson that uh, she did was that um, every day she began to uh, visit uh, the Jennifer Monastery. And uh, uh, somehow she began to stay late. And uh, she uh, find some place uh, to stay nearby uh, the Buddha. Um, but um, at night and in the morning, she began to um, uh, go out uh, from the Buddha hut. Uh, and uh, the people asked her, uh, where did you come from? So she uh, told them that, um, well, I just came from the hut of the uh, Mount Gautama, the Sri Buddha. And uh, that's going on for several months. So basically, uh, she stayed late uh, in the evening, uh, even after uh, the Buddha lecture to uh, the whole uh, communities and groups. And uh, in, early in the morning, she began to work out on that area to create the doubts on the, uh, the people surrounding her, uh, including Buddhist and non Buddhist alike. So, um, Sermon passed, and uh, somehow she put on a scam that uh, she. Uh, Put uh, a cloth uh, inside uh, her belly, uh, inside her clothes, around her belly, uh, and somehow she used the cloth uh, to make uh, her belly as uh, a pregnant person. So one day uh, she came uh, spray. Uh, into um, the Jephthah monastery where the Buddha was uh, teaching. In that moment, uh, she had stood up and told the fingers to the Buddha, to school the Buddha, that um, uh, your uh, teachings is so wonderful, uh, your uh, voice is so wonderful. Uh, but you forget uh, your um, responsibilities that uh, you don't tell uh, your disciple, uh, like the visitor of the female Buddhist disciple, uh, Anna Pantika, uh, the uh, layman, 
the one that uh, laid out the roads uh, to buy the lands uh, of the uh, Jennifer Prince to offer to the Buddhas to uh, uh, build uh, that Jetapro monastery. And so she said that, um, um, well, if you uh, don't tell your uh, followers uh, to take care of me uh, because um, I'm pregnant now and then ready to be birth to uh, our child. And so you so be responsible uh, for what you, you did to me. Uh, so uh, how could the uh, people who lives and curse on you anymore? And so uh, at that time, uh, the Buddha uh, stopped uh, his uh, teaching on the spot and uh, she, he said that, well, uh, only you and me know whether it's true or not. Uh, so um, the Buddha said further that um, if someone breaks uh, the peace and speak uh, the lies, uh, so there's no evil deeds that they would not commit. And at that moment, uh, according to uh, the legend, they say that somehow um, the, the tone of the seat of the second kind of God uh, was uh, shaken. And uh, somehow he uh, uh, complained and observed uh, what's happening. And so somehow he saw that uh, the widow was accused wrongly uh, by a lady. So that's why, according to the legend, this uh, kind of God, Shakyam, um, appears uh, himself as a rat uh, that um, uh, went to the clothes uh, of this uh, uh, woman and by uh, the, um, the string that tied the ropes um, to make uh, as a way that she was pregnant. And at that time, when the string was uh, broken by uh, the, um, the rat, uh, so all the clothes from her belly uh, fall down to the ground. And everyone uh, saw that. And some uh, people in the assembly uh, yelled her and chased her out the door. And the population, when she uh, ran out of the door uh, and out of the monastery, and she fell into a hole. And that hole uh, swallowed her. And she went straight to uh, the hell. That's according to the legend. And uh, from that time on, uh, people trust the Buddha more than before. So let me uh, share with you uh, the image uh, that uh, uh, show how this lady accused the Buddha uh, wrongly here. Uh, and she stood in front of the assembly yeah. and not a picture or image here and point the fingers to the Buddha uh, to accuse him uh, to uh, uh, impregnate her. Mm. So this is the image. Uh, okay. And this is not the image here. Uh, so um, uh, that's her name. Sinta Manavika. Mm. So uh, at that time, mm, uh, some mm, monks in the assembly asked the Buddha, uh, why did the Buddha um, uh, reveal uh, uh, mm, that uh, she accused him wrongly beforehand? 
So would I say that's not the job of uh, a holy man? Uh, so whether people uh, praise him or accuse him, he still remain calm. So let me share with you uh, one video clip uh, that demonstrates uh, how this um, uh, lady uh, accused the Buddha wrongly. In the early years of Buddhism, the Buddha helped many people, thus spreading the popularity of Buddhism. Because of this, people abandoned their old religions to go follow the Buddha. Masters and leaders of other religions tried to win them back by declaring, We are just as holy as the Buddha. Serving and making offerings to us will bring you equal rewards as if you gave them to the Buddha. However, the people did not respond as the religious leaders expected. They called a meeting and began to complain. <sighs> the Buddha is taking all of our students. No one is making offerings or serving us. We must find a way to bring our students back. Are we not men of wisdom? Let us use wisdom to destroy Buddhism. A young man offered, Why don't we use Chinsa Manawika to take down Buddhism? A beautiful woman is an ordained person's bane. At that time, there was a student of that religion named Chinsa Manawika. She was young, beautiful, and faithful. When she arrived at the meeting, she was not greeted as usual and noticed everyone was upset. She asked, what is wrong with everyone? Why is everyone so upset? How can we not be upset? Do you not see how quiet it is here? Buddhism has destroyed us. How can you, as a student, not do whatever you can to protect us? Tinza Manawika thought for a moment and said, Fear not, I have a way to destroy Buddhism. And so, Tinta Manawika put her plan into motion. Every evening, as people were leaving the temple, Tinta Manawika would walk towards the temple entrance, causing many people to be confused. Why is a young, pretty girl going to the temple at night? They would ask her, where are you going? And she would respond, none of your business. Every morning, as people were coming to the temple, Tinza Manawika would begin to walk away from the temple entrance, making people wonder, was she here all night? What was she doing at the temple all night? People would ask her, where are you coming from so early? She would respond, none of your business. She did this every single day for a few months. Finally, she responded to their inquiries and said, you all come to see the Buddha every day. You seem to know him well. Do you all know who the jewel of his eye is? Do you know who pleases him more than others? The townsfolk responded, Who? Tinza Manawika then said, If you were smart, you'd figure it out. The Buddha is a man, a great man, but still a man. He has desires of the flesh and has restrained them for so long. It is only normal for him to engage in normal male-female activities. And with that, rumors spread like wildfire. All the foolish townsfolk began to gossip about how the Buddha had a mistress. They spoke about how he taught restraint from sensual desires, yet he did not. 
the wise townsfolk would push back and say, this is gossip, this is hearsay. We should not simply believe the words floating on the wind. And thus, the story spread. The Venerable Ananda, the Buddha's personal attendant and cousin, was very troubled by the slander and gossip by the foolish townsfolk. He asked the Buddha if he should do something about it, and the Buddha responded, Remain calm, Ananda. All things will be as they should. However, for the Venerable Ananda, this was easier said than done. So he decided to get away for a while and went to find a peaceful spot in the woods to meditate and contemplate. He knew in his heart that the Buddha was completely innocent of these disgusting rumors. He lamented that these rumors were preventing people from coming to hear the Dhamma and become liberated. But he also knew that the Buddha would not allow him to attempt to forcefully change the views of others. Ananda wished to contemplate quietly, but there happened to be two Brahmins nearby having a discussion. One Brahmin said, Did you hear about the Buddha's woman? I hear she spends every night with him. I don't want to believe it, but everyone knows it is true. The Venerable Ananda, listening from behind a tree, felt anguish and frustration begin to build within him. Then the other Brahmin said, Ah, my friend, what you call truth, I still see as gossip. I know how people are. I'm wary of believing things I hear people say. Unless I see it for myself, I do not believe. Ah, my friend, you are right to say that. But I am not blind to things that are obvious because I do not want to believe them to be true. Then let's just agree to wait and see how things turn out. After the first two to three months, Tinsa Manawika began stuffing pillows and other things under her shirt to imitate a growing belly. Every month after, she would increase its size. After eight months, she began to hit her feet and hands to make them look swollen. One day, the Buddha was giving a Dhamma sermon at the monastery, and the people listening were delighted and following along. Tinza Manawika decided to walk right up to the Buddha in front of everyone and say, You claim to teach others to resist temptation, but you do not. You do not take care of me like you should. You should tell your wealthy patrons to take care of me. You should protect and love me like a true lover would. The Buddha, sitting still and not flustered at all, said, Tinza Manawika, there are only two people in the whole world who truly know the real truth, you and I. Tinza Manawika was surprised and scared that the Buddha would perform some miracle to expose her lies. But after the initial shock, she decided to double down and said, of course, what we did behind closed doors, only you and I know the truth. Only you and I know that this is your baby. Saka, the chief deity, felt his seat heat up. When he looked down upon the earth, he saw that a holy being, the Buddha, was being assailed he descended to the earth with four guardians, and they transformed into mice. At that moment, the mice deftly bit the ropes that bound her stomach, and the pillows and stuffing all fell out.
Upon seeing this, the people in the temple began yelling at her. One group of people also began throwing various items at her as she was running away. And another group of people who could not accept the depths of her evil machinations followed her outside and beat her. The earth itself could not bear the weight of the evil of her actions and opened up and swallowed her whole. After her death, she was immediately reborn in the Awiti hell, the lowest possible hell realm. When the news of the Buddha's innocence and Jinza Manawika's failed plan spread, all the people who doubted and accused the Buddha of disgusting actions felt immense guilt. They flocked to beg for his forgiveness and listened to the Dhamma. Owing to this, the fame of Buddhism spread and many people left their old religions to follow the Buddha. The evil religious leaders who prompted Tinza Manawika to try to take the Buddha down were faced with extreme hardships since no one came to support or revere them. Their religions eventually disappeared from memory. Thus, they reaped the karma of their actions. Those trying to harm others that are innocent and blameless will be the ones to receive the brunt of their karmic actions. It is just like someone who throws a bag of feces into the air above their head. The feces will follow the course of nature and fall back down onto the person who threw it. It would have been better for them to have never thrown it at all. Oftentimes, when people try to hurt, harm, or defame us, if we are truly innocent and blameless, their efforts might actually serve us. It is like someone throwing bat droppings into a rice field trying to harm the rice. Little do they know that the bad droppings actually help work as fertilizer to help the rice grow. Yeah, so, um, um, these um, short video clips that um, demonstrate uh, the story how the Buddha handled the appreciation uh, from a lady who wrongly accused him to impregnate her. And this uh, mm, the uh, type of uh, shed hair skin between the plots. So I will recognize uh, the wrong thing that uh, she did. And eventually she uh, was swallowed by uh, the earth and fell down to the hell. And so anyway, uh, in life, when we uh, are successful, uh, wealthy, many people uh, became uh, jealous and definitely they would try to find some way to harm us. But if we are innocent and if we have virtue, there's no way for them to harm us. So um, that's why the Buddha remained peaceful, regardless of um, what happened to him. Whether people praised him or accused him wrongly, he still remained calm. And uh, he just uh, remind people that uh, if someone uh, tell the lies, uh, they would not dare to do any uh, evil deeds uh, at all. And so um, that's a big lesson for us. 
and also um, uh, after this happening, uh, the Buddha um, uh, were asked by his uh, disciple, uh, why did this things happen to you? And so Buddha did call the story in the past when he is uh, start to um, uh, practice uh, Buddhist path. At that time, he still was a common person uh, with all kind of um, hatred, uh, anger, and desire. Uh, so one day, when he saw uh, an arhat, a holy monk, so because of his uh, anger and jealousy, he accused uh, that holy monks uh, that had uh, the unlawful association of relationship with another woman. And that's why uh, in this lifetime, even he became Buddha already, he still paid for that type of commas. So uh, that is the like, uh, story that we need to learn. And uh, whenever we break karma, it's still there. It's um, wait for times to be written, uh, to uh, uh, have the effects. And so we have to be careful what we do in our life. And there's some uh, uh, similar uh, stories uh, that um, happened to uh, the Buddha. Uh, that means he was accused uh, wrongly in different setting too. Now, um, the story uh, go like this. So again, the non-Buddhist uh, religious uh, leaders uh, they were jealous towards the Buddhas because they lost all the friends and financial support from their followers who uh, left them to follow the Buddhas. So um, somehow, again, they um, uh, do this game uh, by uh, encourage uh, one of their followers who is uh, so beautiful uh, that I read uh, to um, follow this game. Uh, so um, in a similar setting, so this uh, lady, her name is um, uh, Sundari, uh, went to the monastery uh, to attend uh, listening to Buddha teachings uh, for several days, several nights. And somehow, um, according to this scam, uh, the uh, now Buddhist religious uh, leaders hired uh, some criminals to kill her and book her corpse uh, uh, nearby to Buddha huts. And so in the morning, uh, they pretend to go out to look for her and eventually they came to the Buddha hut and find out uh, that uh, there was corpse, a body there. So uh, they began to carry her body around the towers and accuse the Buddhas and his uh, disciple that uh, uh, to kill her. And of course, um, so many people at first believed in them. Uh, and uh, that's why many people gossip about how could um, the Buddha uh, taught uh, morality but now he and his disciple create this type of crimes. So um, uh, the king, uh, he knew the situations 
and uh, he uh, sent out uh, his um, the spy uh, to uh, find uh, the, the truth. So his men spread out everywhere in the city. It has happened that um, one of his men uh, overheard the conversation of two criminals who um, were hired to kill uh, Sundari and they uh, argue with each other after drinking alcohol. They argue that um, they could not get the pay evenly uh, and equally uh, after uh, they were hired to kill a lady. And so um, the king spy uh, caught and brought them to the court to see the king. And after the king uh, questioned them, and eventually they admit that uh, they were high uh, by the non Buddhist um, religious leader to kill uh, uh, Sundari. And um, after that, the king Simon. Uh, um, those um, uh, non Buddhist leaders to the court to find out what's going on. Uh, so eventually, they admit that they had those uh, criminals uh, to kill um, Sundari uh, and blame on the Buddhas and his uh, disciple uh, to. Um, uh, commits these crimes. Uh, so uh, the king, uh, hearing this type of um, uh, explanation, uh, tried to punish them. And at first, uh, the king uh, ordered them uh, to go around the city uh, to uh, announce uh, that the uh, because they want to harm Buddha's reputations. Uh, that's why they create this scam to kill this young lady and blame on the Buddha later on. And uh, after that, the Buddha, in power, the people in power, uh, uh, recognize uh, their crimes. Uh, and eventually, after that, they can punish them. So go back to um, the Buddha direction right before the king is declaration of the truth. Uh, so um, there's some monks uh, report to the Buddha is what's going on. So the Buddha said that well, just try to calm down your mind. Things to be revealed uh, in seven days and. Uh, of course, the Buddha say whoever uh, uh, lie uh, and uh, wrongly accuse others, uh, they eventually would fall into the hell, especially um, the one that accused the Buddha in his uh, holy sangha. So yes, after seven days, after that, the king uh, sent his team to investigate and that's why they recognize that the non-Buddhist, uh, the religious leader uh, to commit that crimes, uh, not the Buddha and his disciple. And from that time on, uh, the Buddha uh, reputation uh, was spread everywhere. Uh, so, According to um, the records, they say that um, probably this two story, the story of um, the one, the lady, uh, pretend to uh, have the pregnancy with the Buddha, and the story that um, uh, the young lady was murdered by her own uh, non Buddhist uh, religious leader uh, are the same. Uh, uh, they were told in different settings 
but no matter what. Uh, so this happened uh, to the Buddha uh, and his uh, disciple uh, that um, they were accused wrongly uh, of those crimes, but eventually uh, evidence uh, was revealed and uh, it recognized and people recognize us, those um, now Buddhist religious uh, leader uh, did those crimes due to their jealousy to what the Buddha and his close and disciple. So um, here in this type of story, uh, we uh, recognize as uh, whichever thing we do, um, uh, there's some people um, may have jealousy toward us, but if we remain calm, uh, things will uh, be revealed uh, sooner or later. Uh, so we don't need to uh, really fight back or uh, try to uh, argue. Of course, nowadays, uh, if someone accuses us uh, wrongly, whichever thing happened, uh, we may hire a lawyer. Uh, to argue with them uh, uh, in the courts. And of course, um, well, they have to provide the evidence, uh, whether it's DNA or promise, uh, sign and so forth, and so that um, the judge uh, would decide whether we are innocent or not. So um, uh, for common people like us, Definitely, we would not sit still uh, to accept uh, someone who accused us wrongly, uh, and that's the way we can do uh, by I'm uh, the lawyer uh, to defend us. Uh, but um, in the past, uh, there were probably no lawyer, and there was no way to test DNA. Uh, and of course, it depends upon the virtue uh, uh, that we had. So, uh, our other people, especially the Pali uh, monks and Buddha, had eventually can would reveal uh, in the uh, proper way uh, the truth uh, would come out. Uh, so, um, uh, in one uh, incident, uh, someone uh, came to the Buddha and uh, scolded him. Uh, so, uh, uh, Rainbow Ananda uh, asked the Buddha if um, they could move to different places uh, to uh, stay away or run away from those people. Yes. But the Buddha said, well, if we go to different places, and what happened if we still see this kind of um, people? And when we do wrong, less we would run away from one place to another, uh, non stopping. So, after um, uh, that, the Buddha just calmly uh, walked uh, to a tree and sat down. And the Brahmin who accused the slender Buddha. Globally, uh, so he approached the Buddha and said that, "Well, um, yeah, I scold uh, you so many times uh, with uh, negative uh, words. Uh, so how do you feel now?" So the Buddha said, "Well, uh, let's say um, if someone uh, uh, give you a gift." Uh, and what happened if you don't accept that? So that young man uh, replied that if uh, uh, I don't accept that, definitely that did belong to the giver. And so would uh, smile and say, well, yes, it's in the same way that you accuse me, you slander me, but I don't accept those kind of accusation as slandering uh, the karma before back upon you. Uh, just like um, uh, you threw the dust on the air, and the dust went uh, Or like if you spit 
the saliva on the air and the saliva uh, fall back to your face. So that is why the Buddha uh, remained calm uh, in all this situation. So the time up, let me stop here today and in this first photo, mm. uh, Namo Shakyamuni Buddha. See you then. Mm.